This video tutorial was a request from a friend of mine, and he wanted to know how to make a PHP search just like Google, with some jQuery in it which makes it instantly search as you type, so it already starts filtering out the results as you're typing into the search field. In this first lesson, I'm just going to be going over the basic PHP and a basic HTML form to do that. In the next lesson after this, I'm going to be showing you how to add some jQuery in to make it instant just like Google search. So without further ado, let's get started. And you can see that in this folder here, there is nothing. So I'm going to start completely from fresh for you guys. Okay, so if we go to my localhost, you can see that I've created a table. As for this tutorial, you're going to need a table in your database to search. Now, as people commonly use the members table, that's what I'm going to be using this tutorial. Your members table will probably be a lot more filled up with columns in this. But you can just see that I have a username column, a first name column, and a last name column. I'm going to be using the first name and last name to search this database. And then I'm going to be collecting all the other information within the search. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do all of that. So let's open up your default text editor. I use Dreamweaver CS6. You can use any version of Dreamweaver or any text editor at all. A good free one is Notepad++, so I recommend that. The next thing I'm going to do is going to create a new PHP document. I'm going to change the title to search, just search. I'm going to save as index.php. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the body and we're going to drop down a few lines and we're going to open the form tag. Now, the form needs a couple attributes to be able to actually work. Now, the first attribute we're going to be using is the action attribute. And now what that will do is it will allow us to select a page in which we want to post this form information to. And as we're just going to make it send to this exact page, we're just going to put in the name of this page, which is index.php. Then we're going to add a method. Now, there's loads of methods you can use. You can use delete, get, post, or put. I'm going to be using the post as we're going to be posting the information to this page. We're going to close that off, go down a few lines, and close off the form tag. Now, once we have that form tag, we can start putting in some input fields within this form tag. So we can put the input, and the first input is going to have the type of text. And then it's going to have a name of search, as that's how we're going to collect the value in both PHP and JavaScript. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do after that is we're just going to put in a placeholder, which is a HTML5 element, but I'm just going to use it in this tutorial so people can see what they need to put in here. So I'm just going to put search for members in there. Now, the next thing we need is some sort of way that the user is going to submit this form. So what we need is the input with the type of submit. So that creates a submit button, which automatically submits the form which is within. Then it's just going to have the value, which is the text within the, within the button, and that's just going to be two little arrows like so. So once we've got that and save that, you can see that if we navigate to this page in my browser, you can see that it holds the search input field and also the button here. But if we click it, it has nothing. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we're just going to create the PHP, which does that nothing and turns it into something. So right at the start of the document, before the doc type, we're just going to open and close a PHP tag, like so. Now, as I'm working first time on this tutorial, I haven't created a connection script. Now, you would normally include your connect script, and it would already be a separate file, just so you can include it into every page. But as this is going to be the only page in this tutorial, I'm just going to write out my connect script on this page. So how we write a connect script, and if you already got one, you can ignore this part of the tutorial. But how we write the connect strip is first we do mysql underscore connect. Now this will allow us to connect to our database. So this takes three arguments. One, two, three. Now the first argument is the server name, which for me is localhost. Then is the username, which for me is root. And then is the password, and I just set mine to password on my localhost. Then we can do an or die. Now, there's two things you can do in the or die. The first thing you can do is in mysql underscore error. Now, if you're getting an error and it's not working, that's the best thing to put because PHP will automatically print out what you need for the error to be fixed. But the reason why you might not want to do that is because it can give out some valuable information to people visiting your site. So you might just want to do a custom string. So I'm just going to put could not connect in there. Now the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to select the database. 
So we're going to do MySQL underscore select underscore DB. And you can guess that that DB on the end does stand for database. Then we just open and close brackets, and this only takes one argument. So we're going to put in here the database name which we want to select. Now I created a database for this tutorial, but I'm guessing you already have one. So my database name is called search underscore test. And then we do or die. And once again, you can have the same options in here, but I'm just going to say could not find DB standing for database. Okay, so once that's done, we can now actually collect the post in of the script. So the first thing we need to do is we need to check if the post has been set. And how we do that is we just, if, open and close brackets, open curly brace, go down a few lines. So we started off our if condition. Now you can see that it gives us a syntax error. It's because we need to put some information in this if condition. So what we're checking is if is set dollar symbol underscore post, open square brackets, two single quotation marks, close the square brackets, and then close off that if set. So it looks like this. Now within these single quotation marks, it's got to be the name of the first field within your form. So for us, it's search. Once we've done that, whatever's inside these curly braces will only run if the post has of search has been posted. So if that form has been submitted. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a variable named search queue, which stands for search query. Then it's going to be equal to dollar symbol underscore post search, just like so. Okay, so once we've done that out, you can choose to leave this bit out or you can add it in, depending on what you're searching for in your database. If you're searching for email addresses or maybe titles, you might not want to do this. But for me, as I'm just using one worded items to search it, I'm going to be taking away everything that's not letters and not numbers. And how we do this is we just type in the variable name and then we add preg underscore replace. Now this allows us to replace anything that's not this first argument with the second argument onto the variable which we choose. So how we do this is we just do two pound symbols and then open and close square brackets in between them and then we do a little up arrow which is above the six on your keyboard. Then we just do the items which we want to allow. So we do zero through to nine and a through to z. Now, if we put an I on the end of the last pound symbol right there, then that will make the A through to Z capitalized and non-capitalized. And as I said, we're just going to replacing it with whatever's in here. And as this is blank, it's going to replace everything that's not this with blank, which is exactly what we want. So after we've done that, and we've done some filtering, we can then do the SQL query to actually search the database. So I'm just going to call this variable query, and it's going to be equal to mysql underscore query open and close the brackets or die now once again we can do exactly the same or die in here we can do a string or the mysql underscore error i'm just going to do a string and it's going to say could not search like so now within the query brackets we need to do two double quotation marks now just like any normal php query you're just going to have to do select all from members or whatever your table name is where now this is where the like and the searching features come into. So we want to do where first name is like, so we put in like and then two single quotation marks because we're going to be putting in a variable. Now we need to do two percentage symbols and then we need to do the search queue which we created which holds the search query posted from the form. And now I'm going to do an or last name like and exactly the same so i'm going to be using the first name and last name to check my table so if what they entered into the form is like the first name or like the last name then it's going to pick that out of the database now if you have loads of fields in your database like loads of entries um, in your table then you might want to limit this so it only shows a certain amount like the closest 10 um, but as I don't have very many, I'm going to leave that bit out. The next thing I'm going to do is we're going to count with the query. And how we do that is we're just going to do mysql underscore num underscore rows and then query within the brackets. Now that returns an integer of how many, inf how many rows or how many, yeah, how many rows in your table it picks up from that. So if there's no ro rows that has the like of first name and last name, then it's going to equal zero. 
and then if it has, then it's going to equal anything else. So we're going to do an if count is equal to zero. This means that there's no information in the table which is anything at all like you search. So we're just going to create a new variable named output, and it's going to be equal to there was no search results, like so. Then we're just going to put an else condition, and then whatever's in here will now run if the search results come back as true. Now, as we're printing out this output to the page, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put a default variable up here. So we're just going to write out that output here, and it's going to be equal to nothing. Now, within the else condition, what we're going to do is we're going to do a while loop. Now, this is where we can collect all the information we want. So we're going to do while row equals mysql underscore fetch underscore array. Now that collects all the rows data and puts it into an array. So we're going to link that to the query, close that both off and close and open and close a semicolon. Now within this, we can then do, for example, f name equals row first name and then l name equals row L name, and then we could even like collect the ID equals row ID like so. Now, what we what the next thing we're going to do in this while loop is whilst we're still in this while loop, we need to create this output variable, as we're going to output the information which we collect back. Now we're going to do dot equals so that every output concatenates onto the last output, and we're just going to wrap it in a div so each one drops down. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to put single quotation mark dot dot single quotation mark as we're going to concatenate onto the string with the f name and then we're going to do exactly the same with the l name notice how i'm leaving the id out is because i don't necessarily need that information in here okay so that's how we are going to print out this output now what we need now the last thing we need to do is we just need to print out the output onto the page so we're just going to do a php print down here which then prints out the output on the page like so. So now if we refresh this, we can then go to, let's say, let's look at our table and you can see that there's three people with the last name of Smith. Joe Smith, Joseph Smith, and Edward Smith. So we're just gonna type in Smith in here and click go. Now you can see that it takes, now it collects Joe, Joseph, and Edward. Now what it also does is it gives you loads of undefined index. So we've obviously spelled L name wrong somewhere along the lines. So let's just check. Within here, we're meant to put last name, like so. Now that should fix all of that. And if we put in Smith again, then it will check. Once again, we've done it wrong. So let's just quickly go over this. So you can see that not only have we misspelled it here, then we've also had to replace that. So there we go. Now there should be no noticed errors. So now if we just write Joe, it will come up with all the Joes, so Joe Smith. Then if we do Smith, it will say all the Smiths, Joseph, Edward, and you can see that it still gives an undefined index. Now let's take another look at this. So I C. Uh, you see that this is IC and it should be ID. I'm sorry for the mistakes I made in this tutorial. I'll make sure that my other tutorials are a little bit better. So now you can see that it just gives the closest results out. So if we just put in J, then it sends with all the ones with J in their name. For example, if we put in P, then it has a P in here, a P in here, a P in here, and a P in there. So you can see that the search actually receives back the information which we're looking for. And in the next lesson, we're going to be going over how to make this with jQuery and we're going to uh, make it all instant like Google search feature. So stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Sorry for the little bits of mistakes I've made. Rate, comment, subscribe, like this video and all that good stuff. Goodbye.